Yo, 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 it's your boy Trey. I'm back again with episode 10 of Blogging About Boas. Um, this episode, more of the same, just, uh, you know, more videos of cool boas in my collection. Um, not any really uh, linear thoughts or, um, you know, tying themes within this video. Just wanted to show you more snakes, um, talk about more things in the boa community, and, um, you know, just keep exposing boa constrictors and putting more content out there. So um, I won't ramble on and on this time in the intro uh, for you guys, but uh, as usual, have fun, enjoy, um, and hopefully I'm giving you, you know, uh, gems here and there to uh, to get you excited about boas or to, you know, potentially answer questions you may have about boas or just general information. So uh, with that said, I hope you enjoy so here is my very, very, very pretty hypo fire head call albino female. Um, I'm thinking she might be jungle too, but I'm not be I'm not too sure. I know that the litter um, that she came from had jungle, and she could be possibly jungle as well, but. I just love what fire and hypo do together. Sometimes it's really hard to tell when they're larger. When they're smaller, you can tell how light they are. <clears throat> but as they get older, they darken up a bit. Um, but she's also colored up quite a bit as well. Um, I love this girl. Um, she's obviously large enough to breed this season. Um, but the male that I wanted to use with her is not old enough yet. So hopefully next year I'll have him up to size and see what cool stuff we can make from that pair. Here we have just a normal adult female call albino. And um, I think she's phenomenal. She's beautiful. I say they're all beautiful because they are to me, to be honest. Um, but you can never have too many, uh, I've come to realize. Unfortunately, when you breed, you will lose animals, males, females, just from the stress of breeding, um, more often females than males. But uh, breeding takes a lot out of an animal, um, especially boa constrictors, which you probably know or should know are live bearers. And when you incubate from the beginning to the end, everything happens on the inside of a boa. They do not have eggs where the eggs pop out and you incubate them. Everything is done internally um, on boa constrictors being live bearers. And it takes a lot out of them. So um, that's just something to keep in mind. I'm going off on a tangent, but I have, I don't know, maybe 11 visual call albinos. Um, like I said, call is like the staple of my program. And... Um, yeah, you just can never have too many breed-ready call albino females. What's really interesting about these albinos, too, is they have, like, tiny little black spots. It might look like a mite from a distance, but um, when you get up on it, it's just it's just pigmentation, and it's just random. She has about four spots, um, and I think it's really cool. It's interesting. It's not a paradox or, or a calico or nothing like that. Just as they get older, they get these melanated patches and I think it's really interesting but yep um she she bred for me a year and a half ago um so she's actually breeding right now the male is taking a rest and she's hugging the heat he might have got her I'm not sure I didn't see an ovulation or anything but I'm gonna put him back in so uh fingers crossed for uh some cool stuff some more cool call albino stuff this is a really nice pair that has proven for me in the past um, and produce some really, really nice stuff. Um, the female is a hypo leopard, hit call albino, huge, huge girl, super big. Um, it's a tiny little motley um, that's double hit for call albino and leopard. And I'm trying to hit a sun clips with these two. I've hit sun glow leopard, well, sun glow hit leopard, 
Motley Head Leopard, Albino Motley Head Leopard, Eclipses, Sun Clips. I mean, I don't know, there's too many of them. I can't think of them all, but you know what I'm trying to say. It's a million combinations. The only combination that I didn't hit, actually, I think I did hit it, but it was still born, is the Sun Clips, which is the Motley, Hypo, Leopard, and Call Albino um, all together. So that's the goal. Um, with these guys, she might be grabbing. She's been laying on the heat for a while. She looked kind of strange, so I'll twist it up right now. But um, he's still kind of interested, so I'm gonna leave them together and we'll see what happens. Here is a awesome little Sun Glow Motley, call Sun Glow Motley male, uh, 2020. It's actually breed ready, producing plugs and everything. I just I, and I produced him in 2020. <clears throat> he just uh, had no use for him. Um, I held him back. He's also possible head anery as well. I, th I think 66% head anery. Um, I just had no use for him this season. Um, very, very nice. Has like a cream peach look to him. He was really, really red when he was initially born. But sometimes, you know, as these calls get older, they start to lose a little bit of uh, their color. And then the Motley's actually start to lose a little bit of their pattern as well. So it's just the, you know, that particular snake, how those genes interact inside. And, uh, you know, that's how he turned out. But he's really nice. Um, he's actually up for sale on Morph Market. And, uh, yeah, I just wanted to show you this guy. Again, uh, Call Sunglow Motley. This, uh, I believe, is 66% het for Annery, if memory serves correctly. This is a Breeder VPI Arabesque. Man, I love the way he looks. Really, really cool looking animal. Especially the head stamp. That's my favorite characteristic, uh, characteristic of uh, Arabesque, the trademark head stamp it is nothing like it and then also the the speckles or flex flex speckling whatever you want to call it um throughout the the body but i love what uh vpi does to arabesque he's actually the only one i have he's only he's one of the only boas that i have that this is the only one i have these jeans like i have other stuff that can make him, but he's a simple two gene boa, arabesque and VPI, and he's the only one I have. Typically two, three gene animals I have three, four, five of, but he's a long ranger, long wolf around here. Looking good. So this is my hypo scoria that is het for call albino. Um First season breeding, he's only a 2020, but uh, first season breeding for me did an excellent job. I'm 99% sure that he knocked up the uh, the female and she's grabbing. Now, I'm going to toss him back in probably in a day or two just to make sure he's not interested. He hasn't been interested for a little while now, but um, fun fact about this guy is that when I purchased him, he was the first one in the United States of America. Um, I purchased him and his sister, um, and I had them imported. And uh, they both were the only ones, um, you know, that were hit for call albino in the whole country. Now you have quite a few people working Scoria in the call, and you have all types of really cool stuff coming up. But fingers crossed. Um, you know, as a breeder, sometimes you try to race your fellow breeders to, you know, certain world first and whatnot, but, um, hopefully, um, he got the job done with the female that I had him paired with. Super excited about it, but, ah, oh man, boas, boa breeding can break your heart, so who knows, but I love this guy. Love him, love him, love him. Did an excellent job. Was interested right away, actually. I don't even know if she was ready, but they say that, you know, sometimes they can sense it as far as the females, they can sense it. And sometimes they're kicked into being ready because the male stimulates 
um, that behavior. So we shall see. So here is one of my breeder blood heck called albino. When I purchased him, I purchased him as a purchased him as a 66 percenter, and he proved for me. Don't you love when a plan comes together? He was much, much more red, though, and he's actually about to shed soon. He was so much more red, um, but more. But now he's more of a deep burgundy um, and, and brown than red, but um, he produces some phenomenal offspring. I'm talking about crazy color, and uh, that's all you can ask for because you know as they get older, depending on the genes, they can, um, you know, lose some... Um, vibrance and, and color but uh i love them all you know you know you just gotta trust the process and believe in the genes this is a uh ron st pierre one of the original stock um well from his original stock i should say so really happy and and his his offspring at least you know just a year out now look a trillion times better than him i'm sure i'll make some videos about them um eventually but yeah just wanted to show you this guy probably shouldn't have because he's not looking his best right now like i said he'll shed some but it is what it is blood het call albino so this is a really nice 2020 um breed ready albino head blood call albino head blood y'all should just know by now when i say albino I mean, call albino, because that's all I work with. Um, I may have a straggler sharp animal here or there, but, um, or, or something that might be like a possible sharp or something, but I typically work exclusively, and we're talking about T-negative albinos, typically exclusively with call albino. So when I say albino, unless I say otherwise, I'm talking about call albino. actually just ate like a day or two ago and i don't even see a lump no more I have them on smalls you can see size reference um but he's perfect breeder size he's probably about three and a half feet something like that beautiful boy Really, really like how the red is, is staying around in the tail. That's uh, sometimes an indication of, you know, being had blood, but sometimes it's just a really nice call albino. So this really, really nice uh, boa is a PDMT, which stands for Pastel Dream Motley Jungle. She's also a Summit Pastel. Uh, I'm sorry. PDMT stands for Pastel Dream Monster Tail. <laughs> but she's also a Summit Pastel, and she's also Motley, and she's also Jungle. Just beautiful. Um, no possible known head. She actually just ate a large rat um, about three days ago. Two, three days ago, I forget. Um, so that's a little nice little bulge in there digesting. But the color on this tail is... Man, you got to see this thing in person. So pretty. She actually is available on Morph Market. So if you like Motley, if you like Jungle, if you want to add color to your projects, she is up for a very reasonable price. And she probably will be ready to breed in the next year or so. Maybe two years, um, depending on how you feed. I feed every 14 days. So um, feed her weekly. Might be right up to size. Like I said, she's already on largest. So primed and ready. Good to go. So I hope you guys enjoyed episode 10 of Blogging About Boas. <laughs> um, as usual, if you have questions about animals that you saw in the video that are for sale, the link to uh, my Morph Market account and all my social media accounts uh, will be listed in the description. It's really important for you to follow my social media accounts because I give a lot of uh, information about you know potential sales I have going um, flash sales and, you know, all, all types of cool stuff that you might want to, um, <clears throat> key in and, and pay attention to if you're interested in that type of thing. So, uh, with that said, again, 
Hope you guys enjoyed that video of, uh, you know, a little bit more of my collection. I'm going to just keep putting out content and keep putting out, you know, certain boas within my collection. I'm not going to show you guys everything, um, but as I keep compiling these, these videos of my snakes, um, um, you know, I'm going to keep exposing, you know, boas to uh, the community and just putting more stuff out on the internet because it's just not enough. It's just not enough boa constrictor stuff out there. So... Trying to do my small part in uh, changing that. Again, have any questions, feel free to reach out and contact me about any potential snake I have for sale on my Morph Market account. Or if you just have just general questions about boas. So, hope you guys enjoy. Until next time. Peace.